Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to use absolute and relative positioning. Um, I'll be showing you how to use it on both Pro Standard and Pro Plus. So yeah, we're going to start by just using an image. So here I'm just like adjusting the image and all that. So basically when you're working with Pro Standard and absolute positioning, you're always going to end up doing it with an actual like embed itself. Rather on Pro Plus, you can actually use like the specific element styling that it has. So first we're going to work with Pro Standard. So you're just going to put it between first two styles. And no matter what you're using, either a text or an image, you have to go to the image ID or the element ID. So here the element ID that's given by card is image 01. So you give it your ID and now you start working from there. So yeah, so we're, first we're going to work with absolute positioning. So absolute positioning is like, you're going to see the difference with relative positioning when we start working with like pro when I start like comparing on it with Pro Plus, but you can use both the type of positioning on Pro Standard. So absolute positioning will like get rid of any like barrier. Like it's really, it's kind of hard to like explain it in words, but you can see it later. But the absolute positioning is just going to help it move into different locations that you want it to. So yeah, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, choose which directions we want it to go. So we're going to put it in that corner where the mouse is hovering. And so we're going to move it left to EM. So that it means it's going to define where it is left at 0 EM. And when you say shift it to 2, it's going to shift it to from that left to 0 EM. And that's the same for the bottom. It's going to define at that 0 point and move 2 from there. And it's going to move in the positive 2 direction. So it's actually going to end up moving up from left. It's going to end up moving towards the right direction. And so you'll see that when we end up publishing the entire thing, saving the changes, you can see how it's moved. So it's defined that 0 EM part, and it's moving 2 from there and 2 from the bottom. So you can also move it, if you wanted to move it down from that 0 EM line, you would just do negative 2 EM like I just showed. And let's say you can also define it from the top. It's going to be different from what they define as bottom. It's the same it would be if you were doing left or right. And you can see when I do top, it just shifts it up a little more than how it did from the bottom negative 2 because it has a different starting point. And you can do the same thing. You can define it from the right. It has a 0 EM part. And you can define from there. You don't have to use EM if you're more comfortable comfortable using px you can also use px i prefer using em i like using more bigger more measurements than i do smaller measurements so now we're going to work with this with pro plus if you're and here i'll show the difference between relative and absolute positioning so you go to the little style thing that it has per element and you have the property value thing that which you've seen when i've made pro plus tutorials now i'm going to show the difference but um absolute positioning and relative positioning now so i'm just using the text embed and i'm going to show it here so i'm going to go to style and all that so here if i do position relative and then you'll be able to see when i'm sharp moving it you see the green hover around that box when you have relative positioning that hover will always stay there and so like it'll be like kind of like a barrier this is a smaller text, but with the absolute text, it creates that straight line, and that means it's free to move like anywhere. It's there's not going to be that like barrier there, and you can see that when working with more complex cards, sometimes there's going to be like a barrier when you're using relative positioning right there, that barrier which can be uh, not as helpful when you're working with more complex cards or like a complex design. But sometimes having that barrier there is also nice. It just depends on the type of card that you're working with and you have to see which type of positioning you like better. So I always usually prefer absolute positioning in my opinion. I just think it's easier to work with sometimes. But again, like whatever, it just depends on the certain type of design that you're doing. And then you just move it around and see, you know, like where it's going and like how you want it to move into.
so yeah that gives you like it's like a base super basic tutorial on the difference between relative and absolute positioning sorry for any background noise and sorry for my stuffiness i am quite sick i thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you want any more videos like this